Hi. Hello, my name is Aggie Hinchewski. I'm part of the marketing team here at WNS Denali. I'm also a procurement professional with over 15 years of experience in sourcing. So today I thought I would marry the two and give you my pro tips on how to source promotional items. And that means the golf balls, the t-shirts, the pens, the mugs, everything with your logo on it that you might be using for marketing or employee recognition purposes, otherwise known as tchotchkes. So you might be saying, why is this important to me? I don't really understand why this spend category is going to give me any benefit. So my pro tip number one is don't underestimate the tchotchkes, right? This is a category that's pretty low hanging fruit. There's a lot of compressible margin. You're gonna be able to find some pretty good savings. You might be in a situation where you're asked to find additional savings and tap into categories you've never sourced before. You might not even be a procurement professional, but you might just have a significant drop in your budget and you need to do more with less. So promotional items are a really good place to start. Pro tip number two is you've got to get your data right. Um, when gathering your data, meaning all of the items that you want to source, uh, it's a really decentralized category because you have a really broad user base for this, right? It's not just marketing. Your HR team, um, random managers within your company, uh, even your office fun club, are pro they're all probably buying branded merchandise. So if you gather up who's buying what, you know, who has bought what in the past, what they plan to buy this year, what the budgets are, uh, you're going to come up with a really nice picture of volume. And the more volume you get in there, the more attractive your business is to potential suppliers, and you're going to be able to get more savings and better service. Um, the other element of the data is you want to make sure you get the item descriptions right. So it's not just a pen, but it's exactly the type of pen that you want. It's a Sharpie or it's, you know, this level of quality of pen so that you're going to get the best price and uh, your suppliers know exactly what you're looking for. Pro tip number three is getting your service levels and getting all of the selection criteria narrowed down ahead of time. So if you don't know what AQSCI stands for, look it up. Hint, it's assurance of supply, quality, service, cost, and innovation. All of those things go into painting the full picture of service levels for your um, the item that you're going out to bid for. And so use that to have a conversation with your stakeholders about what it is that they need, um, what they don't need, and you know where the, when they need it, where they need it. In this category, it's, um, it's actually pretty common to overpay for services that you don't need. So make sure that you're being very clear with your suppliers exactly what you are and are not willing to pay for. At the end of the day, you want to be able to compare your suppliers like this side by side where everything is the same, right? The product specifications, the service that they're going to offer you. And then you're really just looking across pricing to make an educated decision on which supplier is the best fit for you. So that leads us to pro tip number four about pricing. So when you're collecting pricing for promotional items, the biggest thing is market basket. You don't need to have a list of every single item you're going to buy. That would take you forever and you're probably going to get it wrong anyway. So instead, focus on the majority of the spend. Let's say about 80% of the items that you know you're going to buy and the volumes and then put that into the bid sheet and focus on those. And the other thing is markup. You don't want to just ask for the line item price for all of these items. What you really want to look at is the percent markup. How much is the supplier going to mark up the manufacturer's cost? That's going to really allow you to hone in on where you can get the most savings. And then if you, as you continue your negotiations, you really want to follow up with that. Pro tip number five is creating competition. You have to make sure that your suppliers want to bid on this business. So make sure you've created a really attractive bid package, you've made yourself attractive to work with, and then get suppliers that are the right fit for you, and then the competition will happen. You can run a multi-round RFP, or if you have access to an online auction technology, reverse auction is a great way to really drive the price down and to create competition in this market. So once you have that, you can award to your supplier and you'll be all set. Now, I do want to recognize that we're filming this during the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. So just a couple of things. While you might be facing some supply chain disruptions, 
Um, like especially when um, your suppliers are sourcing things from heavily affected areas of the globe, you actually uh, also have the opportunity to leverage some of the perks of the situation. You know, more suppliers are going to want to work with you. They'll really want the business. Um, they'll be willing to work with you on some freebies, some additional services, maybe some um, consulting on how to make promotional items work better for you. Um, and uh, the business continuity aspect should shake itself out within the next couple of weeks. So as you're moving forward, uh, if you want to continue to stay up to date on this category and get the most information, the most recent information, I'll link to some of the professional services associations down below in the comments. And reading their website is really gonna help you get up to speed on what they are and aren't doing in terms of perks and freebies and in response to the pandemic. And that's gonna give you the most up-to-date um, information to go on. So thanks for listening. Uh, I hope that this was valuable and we'll see you next time.